guys, welcome to another episode of Underground Reviews. When having a discussion about the most important and influential thrash metal bands to come out of the 80s Bay Area scene, you will ultimately end up talking about Oakland Thrashers' violence. Their seminal run of three fantastic albums between 1985 when they were formed and when they split in 1993 are still considered some of the finest in the genre. Uh, with their heady blend of vicious and somewhat but not overly technical riffing, extreme lyrics and aggressive delivery from singer Sean Killian, violence was a, a force to be reckoned with on their albums. They were also famous for having some of the wildest and most violent live shows from among their contemporaries as well, with many stories of bloodshed and brutality that only really served to heighten their reputation as being one of the most brutal and extreme bands in the thrash scene at the time. Violence were probably the the best live band in the Bay Area. They just put on a high energy intensity show, which would really get, got them a buzz before they ever got signed. Their shows were amazing. Just a lot of slam pits, real violent, real violent uh, slam pits. Let me give you a violence pit story. We were playing this song, and these kids start fighting in front of us. And there was probably about five of them just fighting. And we knew if we stopped playing, they would probably stop fighting. But if the fact that we just continued to play the music and it was like this adrenaline was being pumped into them, these dudes just kept beating on each other and then when the song was over, the fight ended. That was probably one of my better thrash pit stories that I, that I could remember. I mean, yeah, we played shows in clubs where kids did stage dives and landed on their skulls and busted their skulls open and an ambulance came and a, they took them off in a stretcher, but you know what, the, the show never stopped and I didn't even know about it until after the show when the security guard tossed him off the stage, was bragging about it. <laughs> in 2019, after a decades-long hiatus, the band finally reconvened and rejoined the live circuit with a string of successful shows. This, of course, led the band to the obvious conclusion that, the, um, that more material was wanted and, you know, they had the burning creative desire to make it happen as well. Besides the original lineup uh, members like Sean Killian, guitarist Phil Demmel, and drummer Perry Strickland, um, the guys have recruited former Overkill guitarist Bobby, Bobby Gustafson and former Fear Factory bassist Christian Old Walbers. Um, you know, with this powerhouse of experience and you know professionalism in the thrash genre assembled, the guys sort of went back directly to Brian Slagle of Metal Blade Records and just told him that they wanted to record a new EP with Metal Blade and they weren't going to shop it around, just, you know, give us a deal. And he was all up for that. And this brings us to the new EP, Let the World Burn. So, how does it stack up with their classics like Eternal Nightmare and Oppressing the Masses? Does the band have any ring rust? Has age softened their ferocity? Has their time away from thrash diminished their skills? The answer to those questions is a definitive hell fucking no, it hasn't. Let the World Burn is an unrelenting thrash powerhouse loaded with their trademark killer, semi-technical riffing, an awesome pummeling drum attack, growling bottom ends on the bass, and Sean's terrific trademark viciousness, both in delivery and lyrically. The EP opens with Flesh From Bone, and from the first percolating bass lines and stomping intro guitars launching into the thrash attack, it's perfectly clear that violence really have lost nothing with the passage of time. Uh, 
In fact, Sean uh, might even sound even more of a savage than he used to. Next, Screaming Always has a definite sort of eternal nightmare vibe to it. Uh, then we have Upon the Cross, which is a bit more technically evolved. Um, and besides the in-your-face vocals, has some fantastic guitar work as well. Both guys actually handled the solos across the, the EP and were treated to some nice dual guitar melodies as well as the brutal riffing. The shorter song Gato Negro is also no slouch and packs plenty of power and excitement into a smaller package. And finally, the EP wraps up with the awesome title track, which also, uh, you know, really <laughs> refuses to take the boot off your neck. The riffs are fast and furious and Sean is spitting savage disdain and it's all glorious. Uh, in the middle of the song, there's a sort of spoken word breakdown. And when the band, you know, kicks back in, it's just, you know, people are going to fucking get messed up in the mosh pit when that shit goes off live. Um, I, I also have to mention that besides the quality of the material, the production is also excellent. Everything sounds full and clear, but also has plenty of balls to it as well, with, with not too much of an overly modern sound, but with the sort of cleanness of a modern sound, I guess, if you get what I'm saying. Anyway, for fans of classic thrash, Let the World Burn will be a very welcome return, and I, I would imagine many will be happy to have this legendary band back in action. My only gripe with this EP is the fact that it's only an EP. It's damn good, and I just wish it was a full album of this stuff. Uh, violence are back and badder than ever. Anyway, how would I rate this out, this EP, album, whatever? Uh, well, uh, I'll give this one um, a solid 8 out of 10. It's bloody good. Go check it out. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Stay metal. And see you next time.